So, I'm always on the lookout for projects to have fun with, challenge my skills on, and just get better as a maker overall. I was scrolling online and came across these digital measuring tools. They seem really handy and they look really cool. But then I thought to myself, what's the point in buying one when I can just try and make it myself in my quest to become a better maker? So in this video, I'll walk you through how I designed and built my own laser measuring tool. We're going to get into the electronics, the CAD and the 3D printing side of things. So if you want to have a go at making this yourself, hopefully you can follow along. With all that being said, let's dive right in. I'm using the Wemos D1 Mini because it's compact and easy to program, which kind of makes it ideal for portable projects like a laser measuring tool. It also comes with Wi-Fi and I've got a couple of ideas of how I may choose to use that in the future. What's really going to make this project tick is this time of flight sensor. The way it works is it basically shoots a little beam of light at whatever object you're facing at and then it times how long it takes for that beam of light to then be reflected back onto the sensor itself. And in doing so it's able to determine how far away the target is from the sensor. It can measure distances up to 2 meters, it's small and it's known to be quite reliable making it a really good choice for this project. The OLED display is perfect for this project because it's compact, yet it's easy to read, allowing me to show the distance measurements clearly. To power the whole project, I'm going to be using this 3.3 volt LiPo battery connected to a charging module. A LiPo battery is ideal here because it provides the portability needed for this to be handheld. The charging module is easy to use. All you need to do is connect a USB-C cable and just like that you can recharge the battery and that means the whole project is truly portable. With all the components ready, I threw everything onto a breadboard to get a quick and easy prototype of the project. This helps ensure everything is working as expected before moving on in the project. It's just a lot easier to spot and fix issues early on. I also find the process of putting components down and wiring them up as neatly as possible strangely therapeutic. I connected the Wemos to my computer and uploaded the sketch using the Arduino IDE. And so far, so good. The project was working exactly as planned. It was able to read the distance of target objects reliably and really well, and the OLED display was nice, crisp and clear to read. Now that we had a working proof of concept, the next step was to get everything soldered up so then I can start planning an enclosure around the soldered circuit. I fixed the Wemos onto the LiPo battery using a dab of hot glue. The Wemos is going to be fully programmed before we assemble everything, so I don't think I'll need to be accessing it again.
This was all followed by a quick test at the end just to make sure I'd soldered everything properly and everything was working just fine. With the electronics out of the way, it was time to design an enclosure for this project. In Fusion 360, I started by making really rough models of each of the components. I just made sure to capture the overall structure of the components, I wasn't too interested in the small details at this point. And then I went ahead and made a case that would go around the components and hold everything together. Once I was happy with the design, I sent the files over to my 3D printers to get them printed. The assembly process was really straightforward. I started by inserting some M3 nuts into the bottom part of the enclosure so that I could bolt everything through at the end. The OLED display was going to be held in place using M2 nuts and bolts, so I also inserted some M2 nuts into the top part so that again I could bolt everything through. The TOF sensor was held up against the front part of the enclosure using a similar method. And again I used a little bit of hot glue to fix the charging module in place. This part's really important because the last thing you want is to try and insert the USB-C only for the charging module to become dislodged. The hot glue was more than strong enough to hold the charging module in place. And to finish everything off, 4 M3 bolts straight from the top to the bottom to hold everything together. This is what it all looked like once it was put together guys. Everything was looking good up to this point, but the most important question, does it actually work and is it accurate? Right guys, so we're gonna set up a little experiment here just to see how well the laser measurer actually works. So this is one of my older projects. It's a little Flappy Birds clone. We're gonna use that as a subject. And then we have here a 15 and a half centimeter ruler which we're gonna use as a little guide. So we're gonna set that down about here and we're gonna put the edge of the Flappy Birds clone just at 15 and a half centimeters. Here's our measuring tool. So we're gonna go ahead and gently put that up against, I'm just gonna stand this up so the laser's got more surface area to bounce off. And we're gonna just carefully bring this up and see how it goes. It takes a couple of seconds to find its final value and it does jump a little bit. So at the minute, this has a tolerance of about one to two millimeters, which isn't too bad, but something that I can work to improve on. But otherwise, that's working exactly as intended. All in all, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Not only does it function well, but I love the black and orange look. I really wanted to push my design skills a little bit and create a more rugged looking product and I think the side ridges really help achieve that goal. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy this video where I show how I made my very own YouTube subscriber counter and I show every step along the way. And that's a wrap for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed the journey. If you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.